you have seen this image before, and you know that we can use the coordinates of these points on the unit circle to determine the trigonometric function values for a given angle in its standard position. These are special points, and did you notice there is a certain symmetry in these points? Let's focus on these four points, and we learned already that they can correspond to the angles 6 pi, 5 6 pi, 7 6 pi, and 11 6 pi. And based on the unit circle definition for trigonometry, we know that all the y coordinates are the sine values of these angles, and all the x coordinates are the cosine values of these angles. But notice that all the y coordinates have the same absolute value, 1 half, and all the x coordinates have the same absolute value, square root of 3 over 2. Which means that the absolute value of sine 11 6 pi equals to the absolute value of sine 7 6 pi equals to the absolute value of sine 5 6 pi, and that equals to simply sine 6 pi, which is always positive because 6 pi is an acute angle, its terminal side is in the first quadrant, which is positive 1 half. Similar thing with the cosine values. And we can show that this is also true for all the other four trigonometric functions. And this should give you a hint that to determine the trigonometric function values of those other angles, all we need to do is to determine the trigonometric function values for this special angle 6 pi. And then we add a negative sign when necessary. And this angle 6 pi is known as the reference angle for these other three angles. And how do we know when to add the negative sign in front of this function value? Well, we learned that already. Remember this? We can tell if the trigonometric function value is positive or negative based on what quadrant the terminal side of the angle falls into. So how do we find this reference angle? For an angle theta given in its standard position, its reference angle theta prime is the acute angle, the angle between 0 and 90 degree, or 0 to half a pi in radium, made by the terminal side of angle theta and the horizontal axis. So for the angle theta as shown, its reference angle theta prime is this one right here. And as you can see, it is an acute angle, and it is not given in standard position. And once we find this reference angle, we can use it to help us find the trigonometric function of angle theta. So the first step, again, is to find the reference angle theta prime. And then, instead of trying to find the trigonometric function of theta, we find the trigonometric function of theta prime. The reason is because theta prime is an acute angle. Its trigonometric function values are all positive, therefore more convenient to determine. And once we determine that, we determine if we need to add the negative sign or not, depending on what quadrant the terminal side of our original angle theta falls in. Before we look into examples, it is convenient to memorize the trigonometric values of some special angles, the ones that we saw on the unit circle. You might think it's challenging, but there's a trick to that. To memorize those values, we draw a table, and for each column we have theta in degree, theta in radium, sine theta, and cosine theta respectively. So for the first column, we simply put down the special angles from the smallest to largest, 0 degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, and 90 degree. You might notice 0 and 90 degree, these two angles are not acute angles. Nevertheless, they are special angles, and memorizing their trigonometric values can be very useful. And for the second column, we simply convert the angles in the first column into radium. So we have 0, 6th pi, quarter pi, 3rd pi, and half pi. Now, we want to memorize the sine and cosine values for these special angles. How do we do that? 
In each space, we simply put in square root sine over two. And then for sine theta, we put in in the order from smallest to largest, zero, one, two, three, and four. And for cosine theta, we put in these numbers in the reversed order, four, three, two, one, zero. And that's it. These are the sine and cosine values for these special angles. And of course, square root of four over two is one. Square root of one over two is one half, and square root of zero over two is zero. And then tangent theta is a sine theta over cosine theta. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent theta are the reciprocal functions of sine, cosine, and tangent. And that's how we memorize the trigonometric values of these special angles. Let's look at this example. We need to use the reference angle to determine cosine 11 quarter pi. First thing to do is to sketch this angle. This is a positive angle and it is more than one revolution. Therefore, we sketch it in its standard position and its reference angle is the acute angle made by its terminal side and the horizontal line. Therefore, this is the reference angle and we can tell that this is quarter pi, which is one of the special angles that we just memorized. Therefore, cosine quarter pi is the square root of two over two, which means that the absolute value of cosine 11 quarter pi is also square root of two over two. Now, all we need to determine is if we need to add the negative sign or not. Now, since this angle has a terminal side that falls in the second quadrum, therefore, its cosine value is indeed a negative. Therefore, we need to add the negative sign. Therefore, cosine 11 quarter pi equals to negative square root of two over two. Let's look at another example. We need to, again, use the reference angle to determine cotangent negative seven third pi. Again, let's first sketch this angle. It is a negative angle and it is, again, more than one revolution. So we sketch it in its standard position. The terminal side is in the fourth quadrant. And the reference angle is the acute angle made by the terminal side and the horizontal axis. Therefore, this is the reference angle. And we can tell that it is third pi. Therefore, we first want to determine cotangent third pi. We probably haven't memorized it, but that's okay because we know that sine third pi is the square root of three over two and cosine third pi is one half and cotangent third pi is one over tangent third pi. Therefore, this equals to cosine over sine. Substituting the values, cotangent third pi is the square root of three over three. And now this indicates that the absolute value of cotangent negative seven third pi also equals to square root of three over three. And we only need to determine if we need to add the negative sign or not. Since the terminal side is in the fourth quadrant, the tangent and cotangent values are both negative. Therefore, we do need to add the negative sign. Therefore, cotangent negative seven third pi equals to negative square root of three over three. And this completes this problem.